This is the future of high-speed transportation. It's three and a half times faster than Japan's Shinkansen bullet trains and a Boeing 747. It's a hyperloop. Magnetic pods levitating inside a tube at more than a thousand kilometers per hour. In theory, you could go from LA to San Francisco in just 45 minutes with tickets less than $100 one way. This technology can make working and living in two cities a norm while also creating a world with less congestion and pollution. So let's find out if Elon Musk's 700 mile per hour Hyperloop design might become the quickest mode of transportation. The Hyperloop is a novel mode of ground transportation that might see people traveling at speeds of up to 1100 kilometers per hour in a floating pod that races along within massive low pressure tubes either above or below ground. The technology is a high-speed vacuum tube developed by Elon Musk's aerospace transportation business SpaceX. Elon Musk is not only the co-founder of Hyperloop and SpaceX, but also the CEO of Tesla Motors, the chairman of SolarCity, and the co-chairman of OpenAI. Elon Musk developed the Hyperloop concept in response to the approval of California's high-speed rail system. Compared to the rest of the world's trains, it was a high-priced, low-speed, ordinary train. With a successful human test ride in November 2020, we could be less than 10 years away from it becoming a reality. The Hyperloop concept became widely popular in 2013 thanks to Elon Musk's 58-page Hyperloop Alpha paper outlining the concept's design, cost, and safety. But the technology to bring it all together commercially was only recently fine-tuned, namely magnetic levitation, or maglev. Maglev allows a Hyperloop to go incredibly fast, thanks to the lack of friction between the passenger-carrying pods and the tube-shaped track. The general concept is simple. Magnets lining the bottom of the pod repel the tube material, levitating it as it runs. Passive maglev uses permanent magnets in a specific configuration to create a constant magnetic current that levitates the pod similar to the attractions you might have played with as a kid. Active maglev uses a combination of permanent magnets and electromagnets, the latter of which can manipulate the electric current and the strength of that current. And while this sounds similar to existing maglev trains, the Hyperloop concept removes a critical element that holds a lot of trains and planes back, air resistance. So if you ever stick your hand out a window while driving in a car, imagine if there's no air there and you wouldn't feel that force pushing back your hand. And the same thing can be said for Hyperloop. This is where vacuum pumps come in handy. Both companies are installing pumps along the tube. The vacuum pumps, in our case, were developed by Leibold, which invented the vacuum pumps about 150 years ago. So they have a lot of experience. These pumps, located every 10 kilometers, theoretically would suck out 99.9% .9 of the air between the capsule and the tube. Removing air drag could be the difference of some 800 kilometers per hour. You could go even faster than the speed of sound, but that's toying with some fun things we'll do later. It's taking a little more time before we go supersonic though. First, the companies must prove the tech is safe, which is why this scene is so important. You really can't even notice the levitation. You should have noticed it picked up. There wasn't that kind of jerkiness. The camera didn't do justice because the camera was bouncing around a bit more than we were. It was a cushion or pillowy feeling. You could process everything that was going on around you. You're coasting and floating on an idea that was nothing more than a piece of paper. While the ride proved its safety, the company wants to work more on the experience. And the actual Hyperloop will be much bigger too, holding 28 more passengers with the ability to move 30,000 passengers an hour. But to get to this point, more testing will be involved for both companies. Lots of things have to happen between now and then. The Hyperloop construction, the route is one thing, and the integration with the stations is another, which takes a partnership with the communities. The Hyperloop TT is currently in the works to build and test a full-size project in Abu Dhabi. Its first potential US project will run from Chicago to Cleveland. Virgin Hyperloop will develop its new certification testing facility in West Virginia in 2022, 
including a 9,600 meter track for testing and establishing regulatory and safety guidelines. Around 2025, we intend to certify a fleet of 28 passenger vehicles. Virgin Hyperloop has plans in Dubai, India, and more with stateside plans for the Midwest, North Carolina, and Texas. But both of these US projects won't be complete until around 2030. This might sound like a long time, but airplanes took about 16 years to get up and running, and the first high-speed rail in Japan took at least a decade to develop. Some 15 years for a Hyperloop? Doesn't seem that far off. Elon Musk devised the idea to describe a current project based on the VAC train concept. Hyperloop systems have three essential elements, tubes, pods, and terminals. The box is an extensive sealed low pressure system, usually a long tunnel. The pod is a coach pressurized at atmospheric pressure that runs substantially free of air resistance or friction inside this tube. Using magnetic propulsion, sometimes augmented by a ducted fan. The terminal handles pod arrivals and departures. The Hyperloop in the initial form proposed by Musk differs from vac trains by relying on the residual air pressure inside the tube to provide lift by aerofoils and propulsion by fans. Elon Musk renewed his interest in the Hyperloop after mentioning it at a 2012 speaking event. Musk further promoted the concept by publishing a white paper in August 2013, which conceived a Hyperloop route running from the Los Angeles region to the San Francisco Bay Area, roughly following the Interstate 5 corridor. His initial concept incorporated reduced pressure tubes in which pressurized capsules ride on air bearings driven by linear induction motors and axial compressors. Transportation analysts challenged the cost estimates included in the white paper, with some predicting that a realized Hyperloop would be several billion dollars over budget. Musk and SpaceX have promoted the Hyperloop concept, and other companies or organizations have been encouraged to collaborate and develop the technology. The Technical University of Munich Hyperloop set the speed record of 463 kilometers per hour in July 2019 at the pod design competition hosted by SpaceX in Hawthorne, California. Virgin Hyperloop conducted the first human trial in November 2020 at its test site in Las Vegas, reaching a top speed of 172 kilometers per hour or 107 miles per hour. The teams were chosen in SpaceX's Hyperloop pod design competition at Texas A&M University. From over 120 schools, 29 college teams plus one high school team and one non-student team formed by Reddit were picked to advance to the next round. They are now building fully functional, three-fourth scale models of their pods to test on SpaceX's one-mile track. It's unlikely that any pods will get up to the Hyperloop's theoretical full speed of 760 miles per hour, but the shot of adrenaline to the burgeoning Hyperloop industry should be huge. The exact date and location of the contest haven't been revealed yet. According to leaked emails sent to the teams, SpaceX is shooting for early to mid-August. That date, however, will depend on the construction and testing of the track. Still, all the teams are complex at work, fueled by their collective excitement of being at the vanguard of a new form of transportation. Musk's original paper outlining the Hyperloop described it as the fifth mode of transportation. Quote, Short of figuring out real teleportation, which would, of course, be awesome, someone please do this, the only option for super fast travel is to build a tube over or under the ground that contains a special environment. It's from Elon Musk. Musk openly shared in his official communication of Hyperloop's launch in 2013 that the underlying motive for a statewide mass transit system is a good motive and the alternative to flying or driving needed, but only if it is better than flying or driving. Compared to the other options, it's about what it should ideally be. Safer, faster, lower cost, more convenient, immune to weather, sustainably self-powering, resistant to earthquakes, not disruptive to those along the route. It is precisely these features that Elon Musk has included in his new launch, the Hyperloop. The technical definition of Hyperloop is a transport system based on capsules levitating inside tunnels at low pressure, 
which would have an air compressor installed in the nose to avoid the effect of compression by currents on speed. Musk's idea was to travel more than 600 kilometers, approximately six hours by car, in just 35 minutes. Not only did he envision this initiative to be the fastest but also the least expensive, the estimated cost was $6 billion for a route between San Francisco and Los Angeles, improving the cost of the first phase of California's high-speed rail, which was $68 billion. Supporters argue that Hyperloop could be cheaper and faster than train or car travel and less polluting than air travel. Hyperloop could take the pressure off roads, making travel between cities easier. It's still not clear where Hyperloops will be established, but it is reported that several companies have sketched out routes in the US, Europe, and elsewhere. Potential pathways include New York to Washington DC, Pune to Mumbai, Kansas City to St. Louis, Bratislava to Brno, Vijayawada, Amaravati, and many more. Recently, dozens of college teams from around the world will travel to Hawthorne, California to compete in a high-stakes contest to prove Elon Musk's vision of super-fast, super-sustainable, tube-based transportation known as the Hyperloop. According to Musk, the Hyperloop would be helpful on Mars. There would be no need for tubes because Mars's atmosphere is only around 1% of the Earth's density at sea level. Low pressure tubes are essential to minimize air resistance for the Hyperloop idea to function on Earth. However, if they were built on Mars, the decreased air resistance would allow a Hyperloop with no tube and simply a track, resulting in a magnetically levitating train. What do you think of Elon Musk's 700 mile per hour Hyperloop concept? Let us know in the comments. So, this was all from today's video. Make sure you have hit the bell icon for upcoming videos, and if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.